Battletech, is it a role-playing game? Yes. Is it a board game slash war game? I, I think it was originally pushed out as a, as a board game, but it's a war game. Yes. But it can also be both. And one of the things that I try to do in Battletech and all of my war gaming systems, I want to get the most out of the rule set. I want to get the most out of my miniatures. I want to get the most out of the game. So I am open to trying different scenarios, exploring different things. And um, I think if you're part of a regular Battletech group, things get kind of interesting, whether you get to play once a week or every two weeks or once a month. If it's a, a regular thing, not only do you have interesting player personalities, but these, these kind of mini games or these mini stories um, develop just organically. They're not even reliant on the rules or a role-playing system. Um, an example would be um, one of my fellow mech warriors. We tend to take the stalker a lot. I mean, if we've got enough battle value and it's an open list, open field, we'll, we'll take a stalker. And we've got the, um, it's the, the old metal Ral Parthal metal miniature, which is kind of an interesting pose because this thing's an assault mech and it's kind of tiny. And it's also, I, I don't know, running, jumping, moving. It's kind of a, an interesting dynamic pose. It looks a little bit smaller. It looks like it's kind of dancing to something. Um, compared to, say, other assault mechs, put it next to um, a classic Orion or um, a classic Thunderbolt or certainly um, an awesome or bigger type mechs, it looks a little it looks a little um, underwhelmed. But then you look at the tech sheet and you're like, wow, look at all these weapons. So we regularly play this these stalkers together, and it just got to the point where there's a, a, a rivalry with them where if we play them and if they show up on the same field, yeah, we've got to do the mission, but like both of these mech warriors have a rivalry together. We will close and we will attack each other and, and try to drive each other off or, or fight each other stalker versus stalker duel. Kind of like clan-like issuing that, that challenge. So within that focus, be open to having these little organic things develop. Two things that I like to do, because building on this question, when I was going through some mailbag, Fritz, what do you think about uh, using Battletech RPG in your primary Battletech tabletop game? How would you blend that? And um, I wanted to pull up some old campaign notes and some other things. So I'm going to push that vlog out in a bit, pulling that in. But I wanted to kind of push in and say, you know, there's, there's kind of two interesting things that I've done, that we've done as a Battletech group, which adds a little flavor, adds a little what-if narrative, but doesn't break the game and, and doesn't, um, doesn't get it to the point where it's, it's a lot of bookkeeping or, or takes away from the primary tabletop. The first is after the mission is over, win or lose, you have to nominate an MVP. You have to nominate a mech, assuming the pilot survives. You have to nominate a, a mech or pilot that just, um, they're the most valuable player. They did something kind of cool. On the opponent's side, they, they did some tactica well. They, they survived the battle with, like, one internal head armor left. Just just something kind of cool. It doesn't matter. Most valuable. shouldn't be most valuable P, MVP. It should be, like, um, MVM, most valuable mech warrior. So, or most victorious mech warrior. So, in exploring that, when you get that vote, you get kind of a little mark near that mech and, and, or that mech warrior. And you get to do a reroll on something. You get one reroll if you spend that. When you get five marks, you have potentially five rerolls, but when you get five marks, you can trade that in for one upgrade for weapon skill or pilot skill without affecting the battle value. So it's it's kind of an interesting way to um to do that. Now, if the mech gets completely destroyed, even if it's not a campaign, if the mech gets destroyed, then that's it. You lose, you lose your points, you lose your skills. If the mech warrior gets killed, you lose your points, you lose your skills. So exploring it from that perspective. And, and you have to be honest with the MVP. You can't put it on like this goofy, worthless mech that, that Fritz played just for the lulls because you want him to keep on playing it. Like, no, it has to be honest. Second to that was um, rolling on this chart, which represented an Intel chart. We had a couple of charts um, that were in the beginning a D20 based, but eventually we got it up to D100. And I need to to find those and drop those in a Google Doc or, or drop them in a link um, in a future video. It was basically like 
whether you're um, part of a great house or you're a mercenary company, in between contracts, in between battles, like, what are you, what are you doing, right? You're doing some recon, you're doing some training, you're doing an advantage, and you would get one roll on this table before the battle. And that kind of represented um, what you were doing. And it offered you a one-time something, a one-time something in the battle, the next battle. And you couldn't save it, you had to use it. Um, part of a couple that that I remember rolling and getting were like advanced intel. You get to move, you set up for deployment. Everyone sets up before the first turn. You get to move one unit up to its full movement value. Doesn't count for modifiers. Doesn't count for anything. You get to 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 move that kind of pre move. Um, another example would be. Um, demolitions. We got that once in a while, which was uh, setting demo charges, recon ahead of the time. You could turn one hex to rubble. If there was a mech in the hex at the start of deployment, it's not affected. It's just that that hex then just gets changed to rubble. There was another where you did get a reroll. You got some intelligence from drones kind of watching the battlefield, battlefield updates. This chart of a hundred different little things, which... They weren't going to win or break the game, but it gave you a little something or it gave you a a little tactica that you could try out. It it pulled in that kind of feel. So I want to encourage you as as part of a Battletech community, especially, again, if you're playing regularly with fellow enthusiasts weekly or or biweekly or monthly, what are some of those things that you can pull in, those, those RPG, those narrative elements to boost your game? That's kind of at the base We don't want to do a ton of bookkeeping or accounting. I'm going to go look at some of my campaign notes, and then we're going to talk about integrating the RPG into your tabletop game. 